Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. In our COVID update today, we will look at WHO warning against vaccine holding by rich countries and COVID death toll crossing 500,000 in the US. Facebook revokes news ban following negotiations with Australian government over media code. Demonstrations were held across Algeria to commemorate second anniversary of Iraq movement. UK Supreme Court issued a landmark ruling stating that Uber drivers must be recognized as workers. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus has raised concerns over rich countries holding surplus COVID-19 vaccine. He stated on February 22nd that this had undermined the International COVAX initiative to provide vaccines to poor countries and vulnerable populations. The initiative is facing a shortage of vaccine supplies due to high prices. In the meantime, some rich countries have acquired enough doses to vaccinate their entire populations twice over. Monday's statement comes days after a statement by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres stating that only 10 countries had administered 75% of all vaccinations. In the meantime, 130 countries are yet to receive a single dose. Though G7 have pledged to provide $4.3 billion to the COVAX initiative, the World Health Organization chief has stated that this will not be enough given that the overall production of vaccines is limited. Israel and the UAE have each vaccinated nearly 50% of the populations, which is the highest percentage reported yet. China and the European Union have also vaccinated significant shares of the population. The United States has administered the largest number of vaccines with around 64.2 million doses administered so far. However, the country is still among the worst affected by the pandemic. February 22nd marked over 500,000 COVID-related deaths in the United States. Over a quarter of the global infections have been reported from the US, which has recorded 28.2 million cases since the first recorded case in January 2020. The country has also witnessed a decrease in life expectancy by an estimated 1.13 years. The pandemic has hit marginalized communities the hardest. Native American, Latin American and African American communities have been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. These communities have faced higher infection and mortality rates and a greater decline in life expectancy in the US. Facebook has announced that it will restore news pages on its platform in Australia in the coming days. The announcement was made on February 23rd following talks with the Australian government. Facebook had blocked all news from its platform on February 18th following a dispute over a media code law proposed by the Australian government. The code drafted by the Australian Com Competition and Consumer Commission would allow news portals to better negotiate revenue for their content shared on Google and Facebook platforms. Australia's Treasurer jo Josh Frydenberg has now announced that amendments will be made to the law. The legislation is officially known as the Treasury Laws Amendment News Media and Digital Platforms Mandatory Bargaining Code Bill 2020. It was passed by the lower house of the Australian Parliament last week and is currently being debated in the Senate at the time of recording this episode. This government has now announced four additional amendments to the proposed law. These include an exemption for Facebook if it can demonstrate, quote, significant contribution to media outlets. Facebook will reportedly also retain the ability to decide if news appears on its platform in Australia. Platform subject to the code will also be given an additional two-month mediation period before the mandatory government arbitration comes into effect. This will give parties more time to negotiate a private deal. The proposed amendments will now be introduced in the Australian Parliament for approval. Thousands gathered across Algeria on February 22nd to commemorate the second anniversary of the Hirak protest movement. Protests and rallies were held in multiple cities, including the capital of Algiers. Protesters led a march against the Algerian military, the government and President Abdel Majid Tebouni. Monday's protests followed similar demonstrations held in Kharata, which is considered by many to be the birthplace of the 2019 Hirak movement. Mass protests had spread across Algeria in 2019 when then-President Abdulaziz Bouteflika had announced his intentions to seek a fifth term in office. As public pressure continued to grow, Bouteflika ultimately withdrew his candidacy and stepped down from office. However, protests continued as people demanded a complete overhaul of the country's political system. Protesters denounced the power and influence exerted by the military and business interests in Algeria's government. Authorities held a fresh round of presidential elections in December 2019, which was boycotted by large sections of the population. Incumbent President Abdel Majid was elected with a voter turnout below 40%. Protests continued till March 2020, but then had to be suspended due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The demonstrations held last week and on February 22nd echoed the demands for change made during the Hirak movement.
Protesters raised chants including, quote, enough is enough and a civilian state, not a military state, as they marched towards the symbolic Grand Post building in Algiers. Heavy police presence and multiple security checkpoints were reported in several places as well. Rights Group National Committee for the Liberation of Detainees reported that around 26 people had been arrested in Algiers and another 59 across different cities for unspecified reasons. For our final story, we go to the UK where the Supreme Court has issued a landmark ruling stating that Uber drivers must be classified as workers and not self-employed. This means that Uber drivers will now be entitled to benefits and guarantees including minimum wage. Here is a video feature on the ruling and its significance for gig workers. Trade unions in the United Kingdom won a major victory on February 19 when the Supreme Court ruled that Uber drivers are employees and not contractors. The historic verdict was in response to Uber's appeals against the recognition of its drivers as employees. The ruling upheld multiple lower court judgments since 2016. A group of 35 drivers led the struggle to be classified as employees rather than as independent third-party contractors. The ruling stated that the drivers who brought the case should be recognized as employees and are entitled to holiday pay, the minimum wage protections, sick leave and a pension. The ruling opens the way for over 60,000 UK drivers and other workers in the gig economy to demand similar rights. The decision follows a long-running legal battle with Uber Technologies Inc. The first ruling was by the Central London Employment Tribunal in 2016, followed by the Employment Appeals Tribunal in 2017 and the Court of Appeals in London in 2018. Now the Supreme Court has also come to the same conclusion. Following the ruling, the 35 drivers can now approach an employment tribunal which will then decide how much compensation to award them since the first ruling dating back to 2060. While the decision will only apply to those 35 drivers, it sets a precedent for the workers in the gig economy in the UK. Yasin Aslam, James Freire and Robert Dawson were among the former Uber drivers who fought the case. Despite Uber's claim of its drivers enjoying endless flexibility and entrepreneurial freedom, the reality for many has been extremely low pay, long working hours and digital surveillance. This is true of workers in the gig economy across the world. The ruling, while specifically addressing Uber, gives hope that other companies will also be forced to acknowledge their workers as employees globally. And that is all the time we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such stories and videos, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.